First things first, there's probably a question you all want to be asking me. Where are you? Where are you? As you can see, it's not the usual background. It wasn't the usual background for the reaction to Spurs, and that's because I flew to Ireland on Friday for a family funeral, and because of the coronavirus and the quarantine rules in Ireland, I've got to stay in Ireland for the next two weeks. So for the next two weeks, it's gonna be random backgrounds, but it's still gonna be me, and it's still gonna be the same average content. But if you wanna make it a little bit less average, drop a like on the video, but let's talk about Sheffield United and what my predicted start 11 is gonna be for that game, because I think there's lots of questions to ask. Will David De Gea keep his place in the starting 11? Will Paul Pogba start instead of coming off the bench? What about the midfield partnership? What about the defensive partnership? What changes will Ole Gunnar Solskjaer make? So make sure you drop a like on the video, but let's talk about my predicted start 11 for that game against Sheffield United. And there's only one answer. Of course, David De Gea is gonna keep his place for this game. There's no way that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, a man who is the complete opposite of Jose Mourinho and so many of his, his characteristics as a manager, he's not gonna throw De Gea under the bus after one game and one mistake after a three month break. You know, it's not the only mistake that David De Gea has made in the last However long, I don't know, at least a year, probably a bit more. His poor form is, is not just a blip, it, it, it's, it's a new normal now, um, which is worrying. But David Gea will not be thrown under the bus, and with Dean Henderson being ineligible for this game, he's gonna be sitting on the bench at Old Trafford wanting that number one spot next season. And De Gea knows that, so he's got to show his form because Solskjaer's come out in the pre-match press conference and said, look, De Gea is still one of the world's, I think he said actually that De Gea is still the world's best goalkeeper. He's back in his, his goalkeeper to improve and find that form again. And this is a game where De Gea absolutely has to do it. If he doesn't and there's more mistakes, the questions are gonna keep getting asked. And the longer it goes on, the worse that answer is gonna be for De Gea and his future at United. As for the defense, I've gone for Luke Shaw at left back. I think he will keep his place there. I think positionally he was out of position quite a lot against Spurs, which left Maguire quite exposed. And Maguire obviously doesn't have the pace to recover from that. I think Shaw will not get dropped. And I don't think Shaw had an overall poor game. I think going forward he was good, but because he was good going forward, he left weaknesses at the back. He needs to find that balance in that position. That's just my opinion on there. But for the defensive partnership, it was Maguire and Lindelof against Spurs. And Yvonne, who is the editor of uh, The People's Person, co-editor alongside me, she said, you can't, you, you've got a Rio and a Vidic, you've got a, a Bruce and a, and a Pallister. And I think she made an excellent comparison by saying you can't just have two Rios. And I agree with that. And I think Lindelof and Maguire are too similar together. And that's why I've gone Eric Bailly in this game. I think by his athleticism, his, his recovery, pace, his ability, his strength, a lot of the ways that make Maguire a good defender and the weaknesses that has, Bai can cover for those. Effectively, what you need to find is somebody who can allow Maguire to be the best defender he can be whilst having somebody cover his weaknesses. And that's what Bai would do in that position. And that's why I would have started him against Spurs and putting him in this team. And I think he should start. And I worry about Lindelof's future. I think he can be a good understudy to Maguire, but we need two defenders alongside those two who are completely different. And Bai is so athletic and so powerful and, and fast. It's just everything that's, that Maguire isn't. That's why I think that partnership can complement each other well. And at Wambasaka at right back, that's, that's not gonna change all season as far as I'm concerned. I wanna see him grow and grow and grow and get towards that Trent Alexander-Arnold level of respect among everybody. And he's got to improve going forward. We know that, but defensively, yes, please. So let's see what Wayne Second can do at right back. But he's not really a talking point in any way, shape or form. He can just keep doing what he's doing. A bigger talking point for sure is in midfield. So we saw McTominay, Fred and Fernandez start against Spurs. I don't think it'll be those three that start. And Paul Pogba came off the bench and really inspired, for me, that second half. It wasn't a, I suppose it was a comeback because we were 1-0 down, but just dominance. And Spurs under Mourinho, they're obviously going to go into shape, but it don't take away from how good United were in terms of the press and the overall dominance of that game. And midfield, Paul Pogba has to start this game for me. And I would keep Scott McTominay in and I would keep Fernandes in that number 10 role. Unfair on Fred, I think it's gonna be a thing I say a lot this season, but with Paul Popper back in, you have to make space for him. And I think McTominay, out of McTominay and Matic, 
has the ability to cover that defensive shape on his own more. Now, in a midfield two, I've gone for Pogba on the left with Matomane on the right. And maybe if you're looking at how the season develops, you might see us switch to more of a, an individual defensive midfielder with two more attacking midfielders in front of him, which I think we should do. But in this sense, I think Paul Pogba will be down as a, as a second midfielder, but have the license to go forward and play alongside Fernandez. So maybe in the real shape on the game, I don't think that Paul Popper would play specifically as a second midfielder alongside Scott McTominay. And I think McTominay's just signed a new deal and I'm delighted with that. I think he's a very good... Will he become our central midfielder that starts every single week? I'm not sure about that yet, but I'm delighted that he's in this squad and I would keep him in that team because I think the energy that he has... He hasn't got the, the, the tactical understanding of the game in any way, shape or form in comparison to Nemanja Matic. And maybe if you're going for that experience, then Matic is the first choice there. But there's going to be a lot of chopping and changing between Matic, Fred and McTominay, as far as I'm concerned this season. There's going to be different shapes tried by Solskjaer. How, he's trying to find how, how best to complement these midfielders. And I think we'll see a lot of difference in between games. And for me, this one, Pogba's there alongside McTominay with Fernandez in front. He scored another penalty. People are banging on, oh, school goals from open play. Like, give over. You know, he's played six games, got six Man of the Match awards from Man United. He's got a goal from open play against Everton. Banging away penalties. Bruno's the boy, man. He's, he's great. I love watching him play. And to have those two playing against Sheffield United from the start might mean that we see United turn the screw from the start. Like we did in that last 30 minutes or so against Spurs. And up against Sheffield United, you've got to think of their weaknesses. Henderson's out of this game. Egan was banned after going up, getting a red card against Newcastle. I think they're missing other defenders. And for a team that's built their success this season around Dean Henderson and around their defensive solidarity, solidity, sorry, defensive shape, they're going to be all over the shop. So United need to go at Sheffield United from the first minute like we did against Spurs for the last 30 minutes. And that is why I would bring Mason Greenwood in to start this game with Marcus Rashford on the left and Paul Pogba, no, Paul Pogba, sorry, Anthony Martial up front. Now, Greenwood, I think something that I've been thinking about with him, when he came into the team, burst into it, he looked like a kid. He looked like somebody who, I wouldn't say he didn't belong there, but it was so obvious that he was new to the game and he had the naive excitement of just being there. But coming back from this break, it seems like Greenwood just walks with his shoulders a bit further back. He looks like he's just much more confident in what he's doing. And he's got the physical presence there because clearly he's been working on bulking up just like Marcus Rashford did. He was a whippet when he came into the team. And now he's strong. Greenwood has clearly seen that work for Rashford and is doing the same thing himself. And Dan James, unfortunately, was horribly exposed against a Spurs defence that was pressing and pressing and pressing the crap out of him. And he didn't have the confidence to try and take a man on or try and find a gap going forward. He would pass it backwards. Uh, we need someone with a, a bit more confidence in their own ability in the attacking sense. And I think Greenwood offers that far more on the right-hand side. And I would love to see Popper, Fernandez, Martial, Rashford and Greenwood on the pitch from the first whistle against Sheffield United. Let's see if we... And we should be because of the, they just got pumped 3-0 by Newcastle, for fuck's sake. Yes, that was because they went down to 10 men. But this is United at Old Trafford. And this is Sheffield United. Who we, they're one of our challenges, I suppose, for if we're going to get into that Champions League spot. We should be trying to pump them. And I think Rashford on the left and Martial up front is, is, is a guarantee from now until the rest of the season, as long as both are fit. They are the positions that they will play in. Now, Rashford sort of switched against Spurs as the game progressed because he wasn't having too much success down the left. Maybe that can happen again. But with, with players like Greenwood, Rashford and Martial, you've got a fluidity to your attack. They don't have to stay in those exact positions. They are more than comfortable in playing other positions. And they can switch if we need to. But for me, that start 11, I would probably say, is my strongest 11 at United. De Gea in goal, Shaw at left back. Unfair on Brandon Williams? Maybe, but I, I, not yet, I don't think. And maybe that's wrong for me to say. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. But De Gea, Shaw, Maguire and Bai as a, cent as a centre back partnership, I think they complement each other extremely well. Wan Bissaka, absolutely there. And with a midfield three of McTominay, Pogba and Bruno Fernandes, I don't know the exact shape that will work best for them. But for me, they're the best three that will complement each other well because McTominay will just be happy to allow 
Pogba and Fernandes to express themselves and give them the license and the freedom to do what they can do best. And McTominay, I think, is going to be best for, for allowing the best to come out of those two. I think Fred would, would want to join up and go alongside Paul Pogba and, and Bruno Fernandes and play more attacking, whereas and Matic is slightly older and, and just doesn't have as much to an all-round game as McTominay does. So for me, that midfield three works the best. And the front three of Rashford to the left, Martial up front and Mason Greenwood to the right is, is hella exciting. And Greenwood actually has the ability to cut in from the right-hand side, whereas Dan James can't. He guts out and he tries to swing a cross in. And Martial and Rashford aren't really... They're not natural on the edge of the six-yard box attackers. Rashford will hang out to the left. Martial probably hangs out on the edge of the box. Someone like Igalo being on the pitch is when it would suit Dan James more because Igalo would be in those positions and you get far more out of Dan James. I think certain players will complement other players better than others. That's normal in football and that will happen. But for me, that front three, that midfield three, that back four and David De Gea, that's my predicted start 11 for the Sheffield United game. And coincidentally, it's what I would consider to be United's strongest starting 11 possible between now and the end of the season. But what do you think about that? Let me know in the comments below. Sheffield United coming up next. Slight disappointment that we didn't get three points against Spurs. I think over the course of the 90 minutes, it was a fair result. Edging on United, deserving a 2-1 win. But this game against Sheffield United, we should be going at them. My prediction for the game, you see over on, on thepeoplesperson.com. Make sure you check that out. It's 5-1. I'm really going for a sort of exhibition style of football for United. And that might be wrong, and I probably will be wrong, and I'm probably going to regret doing it. But with Sheffield United losing 3-0 in that last game, with Henderson being ineligible for this game, there's, there's too many weaknesses there that I fit for United not to be able to expose them. And that's why I'm going 5-1, and that's why I'm going for that predicted 11. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As I said, for the next couple of weeks, it's going to be different. There's going to be different backgrounds. Sorry about the quality of the sound, sorry about the lighting and anything else, nothing I can do. But I'm in Ireland for two weeks, it doesn't mean we can't talk about United, and it's Sheffield United coming up next on Wednesday. So drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. Take it easy.